Unless you're a keen, avid fan of the French UCI 1.1 scene, then you will not have seen that this man, Benoit Cosnefoy, won the Grand Prix Cycliste Ramassé on, uh, on this weekend, on the 2nd of February, and he won it. And people are like, oh, fair enough, it's UCI 1.1. Who is this man? And I think he's going to be an absolute monster. I read an article about him last year, and I was like, you know what, you're correct. So look at his best results. Got World Championships, under-23 road race, won it. Class, absolute legend. 2019. I'm going to do some results. You'll be like, eh. I'll get into the video on GB Marseille. Skip for a little bit. I'll put it, on, put it there if you want to just watch that. But anyway, so you can see here, 11 of Cadelli, Great Ocean Road Race, first year's World Tour. Yeah, not, not too crazy results, I think. Or maybe second, let's have a check. Uh, no, second year. So to be honest, we're in World Tour for a little bit. Little bit. But anyway, again, Paris Nice, not, not that amazing. Uh, Paris Camber won, again, hard race. GB Plumelac Morbihan won, again, Flesh Wallon, 12th. Mm, that's decent. Uh, we look at Dauphiné, he came ninth in the first stage, after that, not great, so you can see his stage racing potential, potentially not there. Uh, Tour de France, again, nothing spectacular at all. Uh, but then he won the Poly Normand, which is again, another hard race. Then he went to Tour de Limousin, won the overall youth classification, didn't come out the podium on every single stage, that's class. Again, World Tour race, um, he got seventh in this. The GP Cycliste de Quebec, he was in the winning break with Alaphilippe, and then it got caught, but like, as, when I say winning break, I mean, he was like there with Alaphilippe, like when the, uh, Alaphilippe attacked. And that really took a lot of people's um, attention. And then Tour de Vendée, he came forth as well. And then this year, obviously, GP Cycliste La Marseillaise. Anyway, I think he's going to be an absolute unreal rider. We're going to go analyse his GP Cycliste uh, La Marseillaise after this. And, uh, so here we have the GP Marseillaise, uh, GP Cycliste La Marseillaise. And uh, break at the front, fair few AG to our riders. Benoit Cosafoy, he's uh, easy to pick out. He's number 23. He's a small, diminutive rider. Got a kick on him. Uh, and anyway, so we've got an attack from Coffee Dees. Off the front, uh, a couple of people chasing. Uh, it's a bit chaotic at the moment. There was a break and it's coming back together as we can see. Uh, but there's going to be another formation. This is just like, you know, a bit of preamble to what happens. You can see Valerie Madouas, Mika Cherel, uh, and some of the other people. Sorry, my French pronunciation isn't that good. I did actually study it for ages, but I'm still actually not that good at it. Lillian Kalmajan is start struggling a little bit at the back along with this uh, Delco bloke. Oh, well, I think that's a Delco team. Can't remember the terms. They change colours every year. Um, but on the on the descent, everyone sort of got back on, and it was a bit of a truce. Um, and then fast forward, we didn't actually see this. It was only highlights. It wasn't a whole race. And now we have uh, Madwa, this Vrint guy from um, uh, from Wanty Group Gobert, and uh, obviously the man himself, Benoit Kwasnevoa, who's on the back, like pretty diminutive. He reminds me a lot of Alaphilippe in some ways, like smallest climber. Got a kick on him. Definitely got a kick on him. He's got his old gel in the back pocket. Uh, I believe he's wearing skin suit. Everyone wears skin suits now. Like back in the day, it was like you're weird if you wore a skin suit. Like Cavden to 2011, it was like, what are you doing? But anyway, everyone seems to be wearing skin suits now, and everyone's obsessed with the era gains, era socks, etc., etc. Et but he's one of those riders who I think is a lot of panache, and I, I rate him quite highly. Um, and you know, he's he's obviously a strong bloke. He can descend pretty well, as we're going to see. He can climb well. And it, I mean, if this doesn't want you get, <laughs> doesn't want you to get on your bike, I don't know what does. Look at his lovely French sun, sunshine in like the afternoon. It's going up a climb, full gas, view of the sea. Like this is this is what dreams are made of. And Benoit Cosnefoy is driving the pace and um, looking pretty comfortable. Cofidis doing a fair amount of work. Peloton sort of rejoined uh, at this point. Uh, I believe it was Nicolas Eddie on the front um, trying to sort out uh, Jesus Gerardo, who was the man who was coming across. Mika Shirel is in second wheel, just being annoying because he's obviously got someone on the break who they trust in a lot in these French 1.1 races. He's, as we've already shown, he does pretty well. At the moment, I was like, what's going on? What's going on? And then Jesus Gerardo decides, you know what, boys, it's um, it's time to go. And he turbo jumps this gap. This gap was like, he was properly, um, probably flying. And to be fair, once he was across, it was only um, Arkea who didn't really have a rider, I guess. Arkea and um, uh, Direct Energy, but pretty much, I mean, they Direct Energy aren't too strong, but in terms of World Tour teams now, everyone's across because Coffee just got across. As you deserve, are there. Uh, I think NTT might have been racing this team who were Dimension Data last year, but I didn't really see much of them. I mean, they have Reese now, so maybe they'll have some form, but like, to be honest, they're not, not much. But yeah, this is this is the climb. It's a pretty hilly, hilly course. From my poor uh, translation of French, when I said the French commentary, I think they've changed the course. So it's a bit more hilly than it was before, because I used to think it was more of a sort of sprinter's race, but it seems like it's uh, definitely more climby now. 10 kilometers to go, as you can see on that little banner. Um, and we're about to get into a descent, and you can see here that Ben, he doesn't lead the descent, Ben or Cousin of Wild, but you can tell he knows how to descend, like he's not getting gapped around in the corners. Uh, he's, I think that's the thing, the majority of pro pads on, you know, like 90% are the same standard, more or less, 5% very, very good, 5% very, very bad. 
Uh, but yeah, this is the this is the descent. He's third wheel now behind the Vrind and Madwise on the back. And I think at this moment he knows, you know, he hasn't hasn't been spat. Madwai's a pretty good climb. He's he, I think he he's had some good results. Can't remember exactly which one, but I remember seeing him that he was surprisingly good. Uh, I don't know if he went to Adana. I think he might have done. I might be getting confused. But yeah, he's definitely a, a, another young French rider to definitely watch out. But yeah, these these corners look absolutely class. I, I just really want to be riding my bike here instead of in the rain in Bristol. But it is what it is. And he's going to take him to the line. And we're going to see an absolute punch from the man. I mean, it said he was 64 kilos. I think it's probably a little less. Um, I always tend to think that they overstate their weight a little bit. Uh, mainly because they probably take them in the off-season when, you know, are they going to be top condition? Probably not. Uh, but I guess this is near the off-season. But Hez is a rider cannot corner for the life of him. He's getting absolutely gapped. Um, I think, yeah, Cosnefoy now goes to the front and we'll get to see, you know, how to take a corner or two. Um, which is, you know, most French people who've ridden the bike that, like, you know, they've ridden from pretty early age. They're all pretty good bike handlers. Obviously, Thibaut Pino is an, an exception, but Bardet is obviously unbelievable. He's doing some strong turns here. Again, we're onto the flatter section, going to the final. The final is interesting. It has, you know, a slight little kick up, and um, it really does benefit someone who's a light, sort of punchy rider. Uh, and someone like an Alaphilippe, someone like a Benoit Cosneuf. And I think we'll be hearing a lot more about him in the, in the one-day races. I think Liège could do pretty well. I think the Canadian races suit him a lot as well. Uh, I think he's going to, yeah, he's he's definitely going to be good. And even like in Plumelec, which to be fair, is normally more of a classics rider than a pure sort of climber, like, you know, Nyssen wins it uh, and people like them, I think. Who won it last? It was a, um, Van Mark, I believe, won it. Uh, so more sort of punchier, heavier riders. But you can see here that yeah, they know they're away. The, the peloton, it looks close when you'll see the shots in the beginning, but they all knew they're away and they're sort of soft tapping here. I thought once he had mismatched wheels for a minute, but that is just all their bikes. It seems they have yellow on the front. But here is some lovely shaky footage, and you can see, watch Ben Cosmoff while he's like third wheel at the moment. No, fourth wheel at the very back, follows the one group go back, and then just absolutely powers past on the right-hand side, just absolutely destroying everyone in a sprint and wins it pretty comfortably in the end, um, going absolutely mental. But anyway, I think he's going to be an absolute class rider. You would have seen on this footage, like, you know, what the fuck's that car doing? Sorry, it's a French UCI 1.1. We have safety here. Uh, and then obviously everyone else is just coming across the line now. Uh, but yeah, it was a really good ride from him. I think, you know, based on this and some of his other roles, he's definitely allowed to watch out for. And um, I really think he's uh, he's good. And also, this race two years ago, I abused it. I said, your, your footage is terrible. And now they've got this and we made a whole video on it. And it's all good for the region and you know, everything. So I'm, I'm very happy they've got a got some good footage because I, I love covering these sort of niche races. They're always very exciting. I like watching French races. I think they're generally the most exciting. Everyone goes for it. The level is always very high. And um, yeah, it's good good news all around. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. And um, put Benoit Cosnefoir in your team.